In the news and in the blogosphere recently, we've heard a lot of talk about the role of social media in uprisings around the world, from Egypt to Iran and other parts of North Africa and the Middle East. We've heard words like Facebook revolution and cyber revolution. What does this mean? How do we make sense of these media forms and their relationship to social movements? Uh, you know, is it just a series of tools that anyone can use, or is there something else going on? And one of the themes that I've noticed that's come up recently that I think makes sense of the way that social media is used is the opposition between, on the one hand, sovereign power embodied in somebody like Mubarak, these despotic regimes that are able to control and shut down media and communications technologies. And on the other hand, people power, right? These sort of grassroots mobilizations for democracy using decentralized networks and social media. Now, it's an interesting distinction to make, but we might find that it actually gets kind of complicated. So, for instance, um, we could take the, the tweet by um, Jared Cohen, the uh, director of Google Ideas, who during the uprising in Egypt said that this was basically leaderless movement, right? A basically leaderless movement. So I wonder what basically uh, might mean in this. And you might remember Jared Cohen uh, from something else. A couple of years ago, the summer of 2009, uh, during the Iran uprisings, somebody emailed one of the co-founders of Twitter and said, hey, can you hold off on your scheduled maintenance shutdown uh, because we really could, uh, we would like to have these protesters be able to use social media, um, and specifically Twitter during this time. Well, who from the State Department could have made that call? It was none other than Jared Cohen, who was working for the State Department before he moved over to Google. Now, um, I think it's very interesting, this, this turn that, and this story that, uh, of Jared Cohen, uh, and I think it opens up um, and complicates this easy opposition uh, between, on the one hand, sovereign power, and on the other hand, people power and its networks. Because one of the uh, most famous things that he did, and Jared Cohen, when he was at the State Department, he co-founded something called the Alliance of Youth Movements. Now, the Alliance of Youth Movements uh, started with a summit in 2008 in New York City. Um, it gathered together media companies, Obama consultants, social network entrepreneurs, and youth organizations from around the world to, uh, to do what it says in its own program. That is, to learn, share, and, uh, and discuss how to change the world through grassroots mobilizations. Okay. Now, within the Alliance of Youth Movements, there were a number of media companies, some we might call old media, CNN, NBC, MTV, and new media, uh, Facebook, Google, and in later years, Twitter and YouTube as well. It's something that James Glassman, the Under Secretary of State, called Public Diplomacy 2.0. The other thing the AYM did was uh, produce a series of how-to videos uh, that involve things like you know, how to smart mob, or how to mobilize using social media, um, or how to bypass internet blockages by using proxies. So one way I like to think about this alliance of youth movements and maybe what's going on or what happened in Egypt is something I call a genetically modified grassroots organization. Now, what does that mean? It means it's neither wholly grassroots, that is, it doesn't completely come from the ground up, it's not just natural and spontaneous, but neither is it completely fake either, like a term that uh, like AstroTurf would uh, indicate, right, a PR term for a fake grassroots group. It's neither one of those, but it is something sort of in between. It's a way to modify the genetic code of an emergent grassroots organization to sort of change it, right, or shape it. So that's one way to think about it, genetically modified grassroots organization. Another way to think about this is how do we distinguish among GMGOs? And I find an interesting, another uh, binary that happens in the news. On the one hand, we have state-run media, right? These are the kinds of places, again, like Iran, Egypt, places that have despotic regimes. We talk about them as having state-run media. Well, I think then the way to think about the U.S. and its allies is that we have state-friended media, right? And here are a number of the organizations that were part of this uh, AYM as part of state-friended media. So in this way, AYM and we can think about these social media revolutions as cyber revolutions. It makes sense to me to think of them that way if we actually go back to some of the root word uh, elements of a word like cyber, 
right, which comes from the Greek uh, kuber, which means to steer or control, the art of steering or controlling. So it's not just virtual, it's not just um, online. Cyber means a sort of guidance or conducting or the steering or controlling. So in that way, yes, this is a cyber uh, revolution or a series of cyber revolts, or we could say kuber revolts. Um, but the last part uh, that makes sense to me around cyber revolutions and cyber revolts is going back to sovereign power, right? And we can go to classic political philosophy to understand the return of sovereign power here. Because in, in political philosophy, one way to think about sovereigns is the ability to make a distinction between friend and enemy, right? To be able to say, these are my friends, these are our enemies, that's what sovereign power does. So I want to leave you with an example of how that uh, has changed in a cyber revolt situation. While you know, our collective gaze, our attention was focused on Tahrir Square and the crowds there and the social mediated revolution that was happening there. At the same moment, late January 2011, the FBI was issuing warrants and going after members of Anonymous, right, which is an international online activist group. And they were issuing these warrants and going to them even in um, places like Connecticut, right? So it's an interesting moment where what we see is that the sovereign power um, returns in a new way. So no longer do we just easily think about you know, the, the face of sovereigns on the one hand versus the Facebook of crowds, but we can think about the faceless and multi-faced uh, networks that comprise uh, cyber revolutions and new kinds of network sovereigns. Thank you.